Good afternoon, and thanks so much for joining us today for this special webinar on tips for taming the inbox and getting organized online. My name is Jody Hammer, and I am the Career Services Specialist here at NPCA in our Global Reentry Program, but I am not the host today for a very good reason, and that is because I myself, like perhaps many of you who are watching this, struggle with this very concept. So what I've done is I've enlisted the help of three of my amazing colleagues here at the National Peace Corps Association, who have very graciously agreed to come and today and, and share some of their tips and strategies and their journey to getting organized and, and getting their inbox much more in control. So I'm looking forward to actually sitting back as a participant and listening and absorbing as much as I can. And of course, going back and probably reviewing it because all of our webinars are available on the global reentry playlist within uh, NPCA's YouTube channel. So Valerie, if you can just go to the next slide, please. I know you are the one sharing the screens here. Thank you so much. So what I want to do here, what we want to make sure that we get out of this session is tips and strategies for how you can gain control, right, of your inbox, easy things that you can do that you may have never heard, and, and we're all learning these kinds of things, and then ways to keep organized in your inbox, as well as just, you know, online, right, and in general within your inbox and such, and we'll be covering both Gmail, as well as some of Outlook, because recognizing that different organizations, different people use different um, platforms. So, I'm very thrilled to introduce, uh, so we have Valerie Kirka, who is our development officer here at uh, NPCA and uh, does a great job and has actually been, she helped us with another webinar. Uh, you'll, you'll recognize her face here. And uh, she she is she was doing one, I think it was on, wasn't it development, right? Fundraising and Development 101, which is a great one. And I'd urge people to go and listen to that if you're interested in that topic at all. And she's also an RPCV as listed here as well. All three of our folks are RPCVs today. We also have Caitlin on board, uh, Caitlin Nemeth, and she's a community outreach specialist here in NPCA, and uh, she'll share some of her incredible tips that, that I've already learned so much from, from our little planning meeting that we've had beforehand. So excited to have you here as well, Caitlin. And then Bethany, last but certainly not least, as the International Programs Officer here at NPCA, and uh, some of you will recognize Bethany collaborated with a, with a former in a former uh, webinar as well and shared some great tips, and, and she works a lot with the international programs. So um, all three of these these folks are, are much better at this topic and they have and they have different techniques too. So you're going to hear from from them on what's worked for them. But how I want to really kick this off and then I'm turning it over to them and they're taking the ball and running with it. Um, I'd love each of you to uh, just introduce yourself a, very briefly and, and mostly your journey to an organized inbox. Were you born this way or is this something that you've crafted and, and refined over the years? I, I think the audience would love to hear that as well. So Valerie, go ahead and take it away. And thanks again, the three of you for being here and for folks who are listening in. Certainly. And, and thanks, Jody, And thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm Valerie, Development Officer here at NPCA. Um, I have a career in, in fundraising and development. So organizations uh, uh, being detail-oriented, um, uh, using my inbox is something that I, I work on a lot. So was I born this way? I'm not sure. Uh, I think the, the necessity of my job really brings it out. Um, if you look at my bedroom, it looks a lot different or like my office space with, with papers and such. I mean, I do file and, and but it, it uh, looks a bit different than my inbox. So, you know, it doesn't always uh, uh, go over into other areas of life, but um, this, is, this is something that really helps me get my work done. And I'll uh, turn it over to Caitlin. Hey everyone, yeah, I'm, I'm Caitlin. Um, and I'll also share that I am a graduate student at the University of Colorado, Denver. So. I think that speaks to why I kind of need to be a bit more organized, especially with email. Um, pretty much since high school, I've had like different sectors of my life. And so being able to highlight them, put them in a folder just helps me because I'm not compartmentalized in my head. Everything runs together in my head. So I need something that's semi -orderly. So I think the first part is definitely something I was born with. My head's always been like that. But um, I think the inbox organization came 
um, as I kind of grew up with technology. And so as it progressed, like I learned new trips, tricks, just like today, um, you know, absolutely did not know this. And Valerie showed us that you can have a slide that's not shown in the PowerPoint blew my mind. So like every day something new um, comes along. And um, yeah, so that's, that's definitely kind of where I've developed some of these tips and tricks. And then Bethany, last not last but not least. Thanks, Galen. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm Bethany, International Programs Coordinator here at NPCA. Um, thinking about my journey, I definitely was not born this way at all. Uh, <laughs> my mother would definitely lament at how messy my room was growing up all the time. So not an org I'm more organized as an adult for sure, but was not born this way. Um, however, reflecting back on like my schoolwork and my school journey, you know, when you got like the free planners from school was 100% into using those. So maybe there's part of me that really does like being organized uh, in keeping my tasks um, organized using a planner or something because I, I always use those and decorated them um, quite creatively when I was younger. Um, I think how I became um, organized in my inbox is definitely due to my professional career. Um, I've always been a programs coordinator, project manager, um, and so I've been juggling multiple projects in all of my roles um, constantly. And so being organized um, was critical to making sure that I wasn't dropping a ball um, on several different projects that were constantly um, moving. So I think just by nature of that, I've also had a lot of support roles. Uh, so I had to be organized not only for myself, but for people that I supported. Um, so that required me to be quite organized as well. Um, and so it's just been, uh, as Caitlin said, naturally, I've been learning and growing in all of my roles and picking up new tricks and trades along the way. Um, and that's and that's what's gotten me to my organization today. So thanks. Great, thanks everybody. Um, so the reality of the email inbox, uh, perhaps you heard a bit from us, you're not alone. Uh, uh, we don't, you know, this, this might not uh, go into other areas of our life or um, it, it takes some work, it takes some effort. Um, the average person spends, here's just some basic statistics, the average person spends about 28% of the work week reading and responding to email. Uh, a lot of people's profession, in, in their professional life, they, they're driven by their inbox, by their emails, and, and um, are, are, um, uh, it's a very important part of their work. Uh, the average inbox contains 38% of important relevant emails, so that's also something to sort through. It takes time, and, and uh, that can lead to uh, increased stress levels. Uh, a feeling of um, being overwhelmed by what you see in front of you. Uh, and I love this statistic, 205 billion emails were sent and received each day in 2015, which is an amazing statistic. And perhaps it continues, I'm, I'm gonna guess it, it's continued to, to increase, uh, especially in this past year. So why are you here today? Uh, why is organization important to you? Maybe you can just put in the chat real quick. Um, what is it? Uh, that brought you here today. Why? Why do you want to be organized? Just little things in the chat there. For me, it was the back to that slide. It's it's the feeling of over. It, it's the it's the feeling of being overwhelmed. The just looking at the inbox and not really understanding what what to do. Yep, feeling overwhelmed, reducing stress, and being more productive. Um, pretty organized in my professional life, but personal emails are snowing under me. That, yep, that, that, that's happened to a, a few of us too. Um, hard to find important emails, hard to search for them. That's right, yep. Um, you have difficulty prioritizing and you'd like to find new tools and methods. Okay. Um, somewhat related, you've already started to answer, but what are some barriers that you, you think you face to organization? Like you see the need, you know it's important, but what, what's keeping you from doing it? You can also type in the chat there. Time, time constraints, constant interruptions. <laughs> it's just overwhelming. <laughs> That's right. Too much screen time. Uh, very, yep, yeah, very valid. Yeah. You, you spend a day doing your work, and then when at the end of the day, or even at the beginning, you just don't want to look at that and, and keep going to get through it all. Uh, trying, to, trying to keep critical things 
on the screen in prime view. Oh, yep, excellent point too. And just message overload, just so many, just too many. Too many subscriptions, but fear of missing out keeps me from unsubscribing. Okay. Uh, and uh, losing focus, unable to concentrate. Yep. These are all, I think, all things we've all heard before. It's a second, almost all of these. Yep. And I, I definitely relate to a lot of what, was, what has been said. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you all have ways that you're getting through your day. So also feel free to keep keep chatting in there um, and uh, comment on what we talk about. But hopefully Bethany, Caitlin, and I can give a few tips uh, on what uh, we do to help declutter and organize uh, our inbox in particular. So I'll get started here. Uh, we use Gmail here at National Peace Corps Association. I've also used Outlook at, at previous positions. I find that the tags, um, the, the, um, the stars and uh, those symbols that Gmail has, has been extraordinarily helpful. Um, uh, the colors are really helpful for me to quickly take a look in my inbox and see what's going on. And each color has a meaning. Um, so if I have an inbox, I, I create my inbox, I put as many uh, emails in view as possible so I can get as big a snapshot as possible. Um, and uh, the, the tags that I use the most, um, a red star, it indicates that that's something that I really need to do. It's like on my to-do list, uh, usually pretty urgently within the next uh, day or two. Uh, a purple star means it's something that I have to do, but I can do it a bit later. Um, a yellow star is kind of the catch-all general that doesn't fit into these other, other categories. Um, I've uh, created the blue, um, the yellow, or the, the um, uh, purple uh, uh, question mark associated with specific projects that I'm working on. A green is something to do, but I'm waiting for a response back. So um, everything in my inbox gets a tag, and once it's complete, once I know I don't have to think about it again, it goes into a folder. Um, my folders are uh, very, they, I have many, many folders. Um, and I think in particular, one that I do like to keep around, I, I keep a, a smile folder uh, around. And that's something that um, luckily in Gmail, you can, you can tag multiple, um, you can tag an email with multiple um, labels and uh, folders. And so there's certain emails where uh, it might it might have uh, made me laugh, or perhaps it was a compliment, or just uh, something really something really rewarding happened. And I put that in my smile folder. So later, when I might have uh, a more difficult day, or I'm feeling down, I can go into my smile folder, and and uh, it kind of picks me up and and reminds me of um, uh, uh, what you know. It just kind of gives me a little boost of motivation. So. Um, I can uh, share my screen here. In this way, kind of show you what my inbox looks like a bit. Um, usually I have more, but uh, I've only shown a few. I've, I've cleared out my inbox, so these are examples, but usually my inbox is, is completely full. Uh, and I did get a new email while we were talking here. Uh, I get um, uh, an Instagram notification. So uh, this I would, let's see, take a look, kind of see what happens. I don't see these as, as too important, so I will delete that. It's a, it's a bit less relevant to my work. Um, this is uh, an in-person visit to American University, the museum. Um, there's a museum of the Peace Corps experience and they have an exhibit, an active exhibit right now at American University. Uh, I missed the visitations last week and um, I'm gonna go this week. So that gets a red star. Um, Bethany sent me a report for um, a community fund project. So I'm going to file that uh, in my folder. Um, so this allows me to go down through my inbox go back when I'm either at the end of the day when I'm feeling more tired or um, uh, for whatever reason, I just can't get to it. I can, I can go back on my green, green check marks and take care of that. Um, this use this, this is a screenshot I sent to myself for this presentation. So I saved it in my pictures folder. I can delete this. Um, I'm sending a, an invitation list to Glenn for Philadelphia. So um, that I have to put together, that gets a red star. Um, this, this was a meeting with Judith, I sent a Zoom. So that gets a, a yellow exclamation point and so on. 
Um, the complete folder is something that I use all the time. If, if nothing fits into a folder, it's just also kind of a catch all. Um, if I know that I'm done with it, I just put it in the complete folder. It gets out of my inbox and I, I don't have to think about it again. Um, I also keep my meetings separate and general, uh, general, um, our general NPCA emails come here and then um, those go in a separate folder as well. So that's just a basic overview. You can kind of get a sense of, of what I do with my inbox. Hope that was helpful. And uh, now I'll pass it over to Bethany to share her screen. Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so I, I do everything that Valerie and what Caitlin will talk about later, but when we were discussing this, we found that I do one thing different than them. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you how I've set up my inbox because um, I've formatted it different. Um, so let me get this going. All right, can you all see my inbox? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So one thing that I've done is I've set up my inbox. So all of my unread emails will populate at the top of my inbox versus all of my unread emails, which will go below it. So if you look at my inbox here, I've got a couple unread at the top here. Um, and then I have everything else. I'm not quite as good as Valerie and Caitlin. I have 33 unread emails, so I'm not quite as perfect, <laughs> um, but I've limited it to keep it from being overwhelming um, so that I only have five showing. Um, in Gmail, you can, this is all in Gmail, by the way. Um, so you can select, you know, I want 10 items showing, I want 25, I want 50. Um, I've limited to five. Sometimes I extend that um, depending on the day and how I'm feeling. But that way I only see the top five that I need to deal with at that moment or that you know I'm choosing to show myself. Uh, same at the bottom, I've limited it to five, but as you can see, I have 936 emails sitting in that never uh, in that everything else. So those are emails that I either chose not to file because I decided that filing them was not important to, you know, it didn't need to take my energy in that moment, or I just um, haven't filed them and I'm, you know, saving an hour at the end of the week to put some in a filing system. Um, and so I wanted to show the way that you can set up your inbox this way. This is in Gmail. Um, you can go to your settings um, and you go down to inbox type and there's several different options you can use. So the one I'm using is called unread first. Um, so it puts the unread emails at the top and everything else at the bottom. Uh, someone had asked, can you sort by stars? There is a starred first option. So if you are starring your emails, um, you know, if I select a star, oops, if I select a star it, I can do starred first and all of my starred emails will be at the top. Um, if you use the important tab, which is this little yellow arrow on the email, sometimes they come in already tagged important. Like I don't use that. So Gmail has selected these as important because they may be people that I communicate with a lot, but you can utilize that and you can then sort all the important emails go at the top. So there's different ways you can format your inbox so that you're seeing the emails that you want to see or that are the most important to see. Um, and so I just wanted to share that, that tip as well. Um, there's some other organizational things on the settings too. You can, um, if you are visual and the visualization of your, um, inbox is important to how you utilize it. Um, there's different ways that you can set it up so you can see the information. Um, so I don't split my panes, but you can split the panes so that messages are seen on one side and you can you know, open an email and see a portion of it um, either at the bottom or on the side. Um, one other thing is the density. So I have mine on default density, which allows me to see all of the attachments and what type of attachments they are. So if you look here on this first email I have, I have a Word document attached. Um, on this email from Caitlin, I have this PowerPoint attached. I like being able to see what those attachments are. So that's the way I've set it up. You could do compact and that just squishes it all. So I can't see what the attachment is. There's this little air, little uh, paper clip that says there is an attachment, but I can't see it, but I could see more emails. So just kind of, you know, visually what works for you. 
um, and what's going to be most helpful for you to see the emails um, and read them. And then like Valerie and Caitlin, I have um, on the left hand side tons of folders um, and I utilize that to file my folder, file my files when I actually do file them, but I'm not perfect at it. So don't shame yourself if you aren't either. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop sharing now um, and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Caitlin. Hi, everyone. Um, so I got booted off there. So I hope um, the screen sharing won't be too much. Um, but yeah, so let me oh, start presenting. Uh, so yeah, as Bethany and Valerie have already discussed, um, lots of really great tips. Uh, I'm just like staring there like, oh, I could use that too. So I'm, I'm excited to take some of what we've talked about today. Um, and so as you guys can see, my goal kind of before I start is really to have zero unread messages, but that doesn't mean that my inbox is empty. It just means that I have processed them all in my mind. So my New York Times um, subscription, any other subscriptions, I usually like click through those just to see which highlights I'm going to want to read. If I can read them now, like at the start of my day, or if I want to read them later, I'll leave them unread. That way I know I want to come back to them. But those just go under my miscellaneous group um, if I keep them. But I very rarely keep them because I like to declutter my mind by archiving emails that I feel I'm not going to need. I'll find that if I need it in a big email search. But like the New York Times um, weekly subscription, I do not, or daily, I do not need that in my inbox. It's not something mentally important unless it's extremely like a, a big uh, head title kind of day. Um, and so... I kind of look through what need to be answered as soon as possible. And like, as you guys can see, this was um, a screenshot from a few days ago, but I had a few of just articles I either wanted to read. So I kept them in there, but I'd already glanced at them. And then um, I wanted to keep, I always keep any meetings that are upcoming in my inbox. That way I know mentally what's ahead for the week. I've been keeping this one in my inbox now for two weeks because I've been kind of delaying putting <laughs> putting in um, my work into the slideshow. And so I worked on that like the past few days. I'm just a procrastinator, but that helps me mentally. So I always know it's there and it just, you know, it's like, oh yeah, like I'm going to be getting to that. So it helps me, but it can feel cluttered if you look at it and I've got like 20 unreads, but to me it seems all good. So as you guys can see, lots of different ways to appear organized. Um, and then see my final categories, like which are not important to today's work. Um, Oh, sorry. The second would be like requiring action or follow up. So making sure I RSVP to any events immediately after I check my schedule. Honestly, I feel like email for me, a lot of it is invites and just stuff I want to make sure that I get on my calendar. So I try and have my calendar like sorted as quickly and as or not quickly as um, up to date as possible, because I like I said, I'm a graduate student and I'm also working um, with the county government in Colorado and I've got my MPCA life. So I just have so many different spheres in order to keep it all. I need like a master calendar. And unfortunately, they don't talk to each other, which um, because I use Outlook and Gmail. So I'll be diving into that. Um, but yeah, so uh, in order to get them to talk to each other, I try and have both of my calendars via Gmail and via Outlook very updated with all of the things that are going to be happening. Um, and then... Uh, so I wanted to quickly talk about filters, unless somebody had already demonstrated that. I got booted off, so I just want to make sure we haven't already gone through that. I'm seeing my co-host not. Okay, cool. So yeah, filters, I use them super helpful. Well, as you guys can see, I use it for one thing. Silk Start. Um, it is a big thing for NPCA um, just members. We get a lot of Silk Start emails, and it's not something I need to look at immediately. I filter it, and that way I don't have to... It's not taking up space in my inbox, which to me equates to like in my mind. Um, so I will now uh, show you guys um, kind of like just how to go through a filter um, via Gmail and then I'll switch and share screen for Outlook. I also wanna make sure I look at the chat. When to archive or archive versus trash. I very rarely trash things unless it's spam because I feel like my archive is about as good as a trash can in my mind. It's like a, my, my attic. So instead of the trash can, things that like I don't want, like you guys can see my spam folder now. I usually go through that like once a week and I'm like, okay, that's garbage. I'll empty it. And then I keep going. 
But so, and I also have it set up so that my spam folder, unless there's something in it, it doesn't pop up, which I love. I like having the clean, the clean, um, <laughs> except for Silk Start, um, the clean folders on the side. Um, but yeah, so you guys can kind of see just like my own color coordinating folder system. So once I've processed something, it's going to get a label or well, yeah, so like I have obituaries that I need to fill out today. So I let that unread. I haven't opened it, but I know it's on my to-do list. All right. And so in order to go to the filters, you're going to click on the little gear bar, go to settings, and then go to filters and blocked addresses. So you guys can already see the silk start filter I talked about. We'll do create a new filter. And I'm going to do all the ones from my colleague Molly. Um, and that way it's just anything from her uh, that hmm, I'll do the subject community outreach. Well, we probably don't. Maybe PCC because that way it's all um, emails because Molly and I communicate frequently enough that it would probably be too much to just have a Molly folder. But I'll have a our project folder. So Peace Corps Community Connect is the project we work on. So I'll use the, just the title um, for the subject line. And so it's greater than the size doesn't matter um and I don't care about this just wanted to get like as like if you if I wanted it to just be attachments I could click that and it would only be attachments but this is just about very very basic um and so I'll just create the filter and then you see now I get to choose what to do and this is the fun part so we could do like Valerie starring it and there's probably different ways to do that for me I use the label system so I will apply community outreach because that's where um, my comm outreach work goes. Um, and so when a message is an exact match for your search criteria, so I'm just going to apply the label. It doesn't skip my inbox, right? It doesn't get archived and it's not marked as read. It just immediately gets a filter on it. So I already know, oh, that's a Molly email about PCC. Cool. And then we might have already talked about it in our email. So be like, oh, I can just click on that because we had already, I already knew what the email was going to say. Just it helps you know, to sort through. Any questions about a filter? Oh, so many little Zoom boxes. I'm looking here to see there's, um, just looking at what's in the inbox, uh, there's not really quest, there's one question maybe at the end of um, something here. It's, uh, I use my Gmail as a filing system and my folders get huge. Is there a way to export messages to my computer files so they don't take up so much room space in my Gmail? That is a great question. Does anybody else know immediately? I can try and see through settings. I, I also haven't done this myself, but I just did a, a quick Google and that's the link. Uh, I put the link there in the chat and it came up with that. So um, that's the great thing, I guess, about about Gmail is, is there's so many answers online. So if, if there is something you, you hope to do, it's it's a pretty easy to find the answers to that. And we certainly don't expect you, the facilitators, to know all of the answers, right? There's always something to learn, as we were saying. So Google is our, our best friend. So great. I love what Dan put in the chat here just now um, for new emails, 4Ds, do it, delegate it, defer it, or delete it. And it seems to, mm. to um, cover pretty much everything that comes through your inbox. And it's an excellent um, thing to, to help organize, it seems. Absolutely. So the next thing I'll discuss, and I'm going to be switching over to Outlook um, because I looked at it um, and realized that I have not really organized it much except for like one filter. And then I make sure, like I said, I read every email I get, but it'll just sit in my box until I apply a label to it. Um, that way I have zero unread. It doesn't mean I have an empty inbox though. Um, so Dan already talked about this, but it's really, it can be hard. You can kind of get fear of missing out or FOMO from, you know, <laughs> different subscriptions you have. And so trying to really get that the unnecessary, I think is important. If you know that you get conflicting information from different sources or not conflicting, but, um, the same information from different sources, if it's not news, you know, maybe you can try and, um, collapse some of those subscriptions down or 
maybe use a burner email. Um, I think we probably all have had some of those or some spam emails. You know, I have my old AOL account, my first email account that I kind of use whenever I'm asked to provide an email and I know it'll be, you know, either sold or used for promotional use. And I'm like, well, I, I don't really use it, but it's there at least in my head if I ever need it, if that makes sense. Um, and then Valerie would point it out for her, categorizing an entire inbox by year first and then filtering those emails. Um, that way it's just, you can do, okay, like 2019, 2020, 2021. And then if you need to further sort, you can have it in smaller chunks. That way it's not super overwhelming and it's already broken down at least by year. Um, and if, you know, there's different ways you can organize, of course, like for me, I would probably do, you know, CU Denver emails, NPCA emails, and personal. Um, for Outlook, obviously, I don't have any NPCA emails. It's just personal and CU Denver. But I have CU Denver spam emails, and I have actual important CU Denver. So if I really need to clean out my inbox, so I'll be showing you guys that in a minute. Um, so yeah, this is more what I do, creating and color coding folders, labels, or tags. Um, I most often use just the simple personal work, finance, miscellaneous, school. Um, I, you know, miscellaneous, random, whatever kind of, you know, a smile folder, love that idea. Just whatever helps you sort through. Um, and I usually am a multitasker when it comes to screens. So if too much screen time is a problem, um, this tip might not be super helpful. But for me, I have a second device and I put TV on or like I'll have Netflix on in the corner of my screen just so I have something to occupy me as I'm kind of doing something like, oh, like Peace Corps email, Peace Corps email, Peace Corps email, because like I've been on the Peace Corps mailing list for five, seven years now. So just being able to just go through that, um, that helps me. Um, and I'll take a second to look at the chat um, before I'll stop sharing and then I'll move on to my Outlook. And then, can you still search by keywords to access specific emails? Yes. And so I can actually show that now. Um, oh, and Bethany already answered, which love that. But I can uh, show you guys a bit of the Outlook that I have. Where's my Outlook? Here it is. Okay, so I have um, apps downloaded to my Mac for, not for Gmail, but for Outlook. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily better for my computer or faster or anything. I just kind of liked it. I'm able to mute the notifications, so I feel like it's easier for me. Um, so you guys can see I have, look at that little scroll bar. I have a lot of emails, and they go back to, it looks like, October 2020. Oh, no. September and they're still loading. Okay, um, so CU News, this is the only filter I have and this speaks to the um, kind of like archive. I know I'm not gonna really need it. Um, so it's just everything from um, this email. So CU Denver News at CU Denver, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I just find that helpful. It's like nice if I wanna click on something, but often it doesn't apply to me. I live in Chesapeake. So for me, this helps because a lot of it is Colorado specific. I'm not gonna be getting a vaccine from my school, even though I love to know that they're offering it, great. And then another um, folder I have, um, this one's much more helpful for me. Although as you guys can see my last email and this was August, 2020. Okay, well, this was helpful. Um, but yeah, it has my job searching very briefly. It has graduate school information. Um, Joan Fishburne is like my academic uh, career advisor, et cetera, from the school. So I need to work on filling out this folder because I know I have a ton of stuff from her. So I need to just, you know, first things first, I can like look for, so current mailbox. Um, this is how I would look through current folder or subfolders, but I'm just going to look through my entire inbox for all of Joan's emails. And there will be a ton because I get, um, she's, you know, like our Ann Baker in terms of, um, or Glenn, I mean, in terms of we get Glenn emails, they're from NPCA, their newsletters or other information. So, um, and I could just, you know, highlight them like this, but that would take forever. Um, so it'd be just much more easier. I could save the search apparently, which that's new. Um, but yeah, so I'll, um, I was pretty sure that there was a way to highlight all of the emails. 
and it doesn't look like there is. But yeah, so I will be just going and doing a filter instead. But that shows you guys how you can, um, how you guys can search for stuff. So Caitlin, just um, to follow up on that question. Uh, so when you're using the general search bar, the general search box, whatever, that would be searching everything, your folders, it would pull, if, you, if you've organized your things into different folders and have the filters, it'll pull everything into that search still. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. It's, okay. Great. Yeah. So it's the current, the current mailbox. And so yep. as you can highlight it on the inbox, so it's going to do that. Okay. If it's so highlighted on there. Great. In my inbox. So see you Denver news, because my filter for that, as you guys can see is just, I don't, I send that straight to this folder. I don't mm -hmm. want to see my inbox. So that would not come up because it's not in that search. So just like in sent, mm -hmm. I click that. I think it would just be current folder. So yeah, you can see that okay. these are just things I have sent to. Yeah, Jones. yeah, of course, right, right. So it's the current folder refers to, you know, yeah. and I Good could do know. drafts, for example. I only have one draft, but if mm -hmm. I had it, and then junk email, clearly haven't cleared this out in a while, and I think that's because I haven't found a way to delete it all. I can't remember. I, again, I've been very frustrated with, because I want to be able to not click on them and load them. And so I'm very cognizant of spam and I'm like, I just don't even want to mess with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that, that was um, the search. And then for the filter on Outlook. Um, so for me, it's under tools and then rules. And so as you guys can see my CU miscellaneous folder, if it was received from CU Denver News or info at off-campus partners, or okay, I had a few. So clearly there were quite a few emails that were annoying me enough that they got put in my CU spam folder. Um, but yeah, so I can create a new one, new rule. Um, so I already have professional development folder, but I'll do just professional development from Joan. So I select a condition and so I can choose if it's, you know, someone's name, the subject, keywords. So much more, um, it seems like more options than Gmail. And so it's just going to be from Joan. And I can add more conditions that way. It's not, maybe if I wanted it to be from Joan to like general, um, I can't remember what, like, you know, if she had like a general email that she sent to my cohort, for example, that way it would be all filters with specific to a specific group. And then this bottom thing is selecting an action. So organizing, marking the message as read or routing it somewhere. So redirecting it, forwarding it. And if you guys, you know, have a short term thing you need to do, the filter might be helpful if, you know, you want to forward important things or whatnot. Um, so, yeah, for this, I will decide to just move to because I still want to be able to see that it's unread and I'll move it to professional development and I can add exceptions. So I would want to do if I'm the only recipient it's probably not going to be, or it might be professional development, but it might be something else. So I'll just do that. And then I can run the rule right now and save. And it might take a minute or be real quick. Oh, and the little, okay, here you guys. This is my first time doing this in a long time. I say first time because clearly I've done it, but um, I hope you guys were able to see all of that. All right. That's that's great. Um, there's some good questions coming in the uh, chat box too, Caitlin. So um, there's uh, there's one that's uh, any thoughts on using conversation view so that all messages in a thread are bundled. Um, let's see. Is is that for? Because I because to mm, like view, I don't even know. Okay, so I can show. 
so yeah that was the conversation view i think that i had on before show as conversations this may take a few moments okay i'm like interested to see it so i guess does that show that it's a yeah, I think it might be referring to, and maybe Dan can provide additional um, information. He's the one who asked the question, but I think it's about where, like in our, when we were at Peace Corps agency using Outlook, every message was, you know, separate, right? But then they went to like this whole, there's that feature of conversation where they're lumped together, kind of like what Gmail does automatically. And I don't know that there's any option within Gmail, but am I asking that correctly, Dan, or maybe you can restate it if needed. I think oh. Valerie uh, addressed it. Thank you. Um, oh, great. I sometimes uh, feel like I'm missing emails when I use conversation view because people come in at the same time, um, especially if it's a very busy thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. On Outlook, it's not, it, it's condensed conversation that I'm able to see. Oh, so you know, my capstone client and my professor both responded to that email. So it's helpful, but I have to click on it. So depending on whether or not you want to be able to see it at a glance. Um, I just wanted to quickly turn it. Um, I saw Julia had a question about when you have like a ton of different avenues and you're being, you yeah. know, I was at one point trying to use WhatsApp and Gmail and Facebook all at once for my Peace Corps work or MPCA work. And in the end, it was just, I kept missing things. So I was like, okay, you know what? Actually, can I get your email and then I'll get you my work email. And everyone else was like, this is so much better, thank you. So I think for them, talking it out, figuring out what works for them, but also like acknowledging, hey, like this is kind of work related. Do you mind if I you know, forward this to my work email? Like, can we copy that? Because it needs to be in that space. Um, hopefully that's helpful. I know it can be, I mean, there's so many different ways, especially like the Zoom integration is helpful with, you know, I have it, one integrated with Outlook and one integrated with uh, with Gmail. Um, and that's fun, making sure I keep my two Zoom accounts separate. Uh, but yeah, so I totally feel that. Um, and I think the integrations can be helpful to a certain point. Um, it can be overwhelming, but hopefully the Zoom one at least, because I think Zoom's become so um, impactful in terms of how many people are using it, hopefully. Uh, uh, may, uh, streamlining it with the email account helps people as well because I definitely found that and I don't even know what signal is so oh I do not like teams I'm not a fan of because my computer I don't know if you guys can hear it it was not enjoying that I was doing all that and it was making a very loud noises and I was like okay anytime I turn on teams that's usually what happens it seems to be overloaded um, and I can't run teams and zoom at the same time Great. Good to know about Signal. Absolutely. There's such great conversation going on in the chat box. I just want to remind folks to uh, save the chat before you leave this meeting so that you have all of these notes and suggestions. I think that could be really helpful for others, including and, and myself. So be sure to do that. Yeah. And um, I have a few slides on just document organization if we wanted to move on over to that, unless somebody had you know, any anything about inboxes inboxing that they want to talk about. I'm really happy to do that, but it looks like most all of the questions have been uh, answered either by you or the facilitator or people in the in the background. So all right. And I love the code color coding as well. It's definitely um, big part of what I do. Um, so can you guys see the slideshow now? Hopefully that's a yes. I can't see. Um, there we go. I was like, I don't know where my video went. Um, okay, so yeah, for my documents, similar to my Gmail, I like folders. Um, I have folders on subfolders. It's just helpful for me. Um, you guys can see I have 2000s to 2019 documents, just complete archive of everything I have. It's kind of like gone through, gone with me from, you know, high school to college to Peace Corps on flash drives. And now it's on a hard drive and I save copies to whatever new computer I get. I, I don't know. It just helps me to know that I've got um, anything I can reference. 
Um, so I highly suggest if you guys find that useful too, anything you'd like to reference or use. I know writing samples, for example, I like to just go back in what I've already worked on and polish that up. So I just have that in a, I'm not gonna really touch this much, but it's good to know it's there. Um, just like I keep, you know, all my paperwork from forever. Um, AMPA is the name of my school program. Uh, so that just, you know, I created that just like I did my job hunt 2020. I created that folder before I had anything in it. I find that super helpful because I'm like, I know stuff will eventually go in it. So my AMPA folder was kind of blank when I got in. It maybe had my uh, like uh, introductory general requirements, etc. Um, but my job hunt 2021, as you guys can see, is a little emptier. It just has my updated resumes and one application that I've submitted. Um, so yeah, wanted to make sure I'm not seeing um, any any questions missing. So good. Um, and then for this is the same full uh, screenshot, but everything. Um, uh, you guys can see that, you know, certain applications I have auto populate. So electronic arts and zoom, those are just, you know, I can't do anything about those. The applications need them. So they take up space. So they just do their own thing. I don't really need to reference it except for zoom. When I have a chat that I want to save, I color coordinate that pretty much immediately. And I realize I didn't write this down, but, um, I just have Blue is for NPCA and orange is for my capstone. Those are the two colors I'm using. And so it's just good to know, like I had to upload a recording and it, you know, the Zoom folder, wherever it's saved, if you download a chat or whatever, it's gonna go in that Zoom folder. So super helpful to just know where it is. For me, it's under documents um, on my computer. It might be under downloads for you, most likely documents as well though. Um, and like I already mentioned, the subfolders, um, you guys can see I have like a few here. Capstone is referring to those that are submitted. Documents is just everything that I've written up personally. And personal is anything like my onboarding information, just stuff that like, you know, nobody else needs to see but me. And more subfolders for NPCA. Um, I group it by COS group because that helps me. Uh, yeah. Any Any questions about general document organizing. And great tip from Naomi about saving the chat. All right. That was my last bit on documents. If anybody else has any final thoughts or anything like that, Q and A. I, I just have one comment on the document things for Caitlin. I I do everything on the cloud. I had uh, an incident where my computer crashed and I lost everything a week before my senior thesis was due. So oh. I don't trust my doc. I don't trust my desktop ever. I don't work on it anymore. And so you know, I was like learning stuff from Caitlin just now because I never work on a, on the desktop. I always work in the cloud. Um, so I use Dropbox. Uh, I use the same techniques that Caitlin was talking about for organizing my files, but I do it uh, in Dropbox. So it's in the cloud. So it's there with me always and forever. Uh, if I change computers, if I, you know, am on a computer that I'm not familiar with, I can always log into that. And the app on the phone is really great too. So I highly recommend that if you're ever scared of losing stuff, <laughs> put it in the cloud. Thank you for mentioning that because I completely forgot I have a little note under the presentation that I can't see right now, but OneDrive is the same. It is like iCloud for Apple, but OneDrive for Microsoft and it's attached to my school email. So knowing whatever like Dropbox email, making sure that that's a personal email you always have connection to, just like my Caitlin at Peace Corps Connect email won't always have that. So anything important you need, if it's attached to an email that you can't have forever, you know, make sure that you're saving copies of it to your desktop or saving it to your personal Dropbox. That's, that's a great point. My OneDrive, for example, all of my AMPA folders are kind of saved um, and my, my work for my school is saved in OneDrive and I have no document saved in my computer. So that's actually a project I have coming up is to save them all because it's going to be hard to do in a batch, but at least I'm going to have copies of those in case I don't have access to the OneDrive folder forever. So 
great tip, Bethany, and thanks for that. And Caitlin, on that note, with the uh, OneDrive, can you maybe explain a little bit more in terms of, you know, when you when you set it up, it's with one one email, but is there a way like that other emails then feed into it, right? But your central, is that right? Or it's only one email that's associated with it? I only have one email associated with it. I have not played with that though. If that's a thing, I wish I had known that a year ago. <laughs> I won't yeah. be having this anymore, but uh, yeah. I, I think probably I, I might actually not have taken that approach because I said I like to keep things kind of compartmentalized. And if they get mm -hmm. crossed over, like my capstone client, I tried to share my calendar with it and it did not work. It's a county, like a municipal government, very like, you know, making sure things are encrypted versus NPCA making sure it's Gmail encrypted. Like trying to get them to talk to each other was a nightmare. So I was like, never mind, I'll just do <laughs> it manually, which isn't fun, but necessary when I need to stay organized. Yeah, no, that question comes up, um, it, and and for me, my my question is more, yeah, the the OneDrive where I'll see my work emails, and there'll be OneDrive, you know, in the thing, and then you know my my personal email and things like that. Like it, it's only for the one specific. I just wasn't sure if it crossed over, if there were more things, and yeah. So thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, and I can quickly share my screen again um, because I do have like the OneDrive app. And like this oh. Yep. oh you have the app great and so it comes up like here in this uh -huh. little corner and so it just like you know refreshing everything nice and so this is what my one drive looks like i have it separated by time um nice. so a random folder and then quarter mm -hmm. quarter one quarter two quarter three and quarter four which are not okay it's because it's in date modified. I, I usually keep it organized, not by that, um, but rather by alphabetical order. Um, it just yeah. helps. Or time created, um, which then it's just um, linear. Uh, but yeah, so this and uh, the little blue sign means it hasn't been completely synced, but the green sign means it is synced. So all of these, all of these documents right now, I can access via OneDrive, but I can't nice. access it if I need to without the internet. So that's why I was saying I need to like create copies of it to, to have a hard, a non-internet version, a hard copy, right? A soft copy, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I still don't think that really answered your question because I don't see where the OneDrive, where I could have it hooked up to multiple, but that's cool. If, no, I don't know if it can be. I literally was just seeing OneDrive and I'll get these messages that messages that are like save to OneDrive. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's really helping. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. thanks. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing. I don't know if you guys know about this. I have several Chromes and this is the only way I can do, which I think Val Valerie just talked about how she has three different oh. emails represent my three profiles. So this is for my capstone, this is for work, and this is for personal. And personal being school as well, because I have a Gmail account and a Microsoft on that. So I normally have to cut and paste hyperlinks a lot between screens because yeah. I'll try and load something when I'm in class for work. And I'm like, I can't open that right now. Um, but yeah, so this is what the OneDrive online looks like. Mm. And this one I have tried to work with and it is a nightmare. I'm trying to do a project with a group and we just ended up not using it. Mm -hmm. Even though it was supposedly at our disposal, at our disposal for school, but it just it really hard to work with. And I don't know if you guys can hear it. My computer's whirring. It just it, anything OneDrive <laughs> related or Word related, it just gets gets a lot. And so I have these apps downloaded to my computer. I do not use them online, but you totally could. Just like, um, you know, Google Sheets would be the equivalent for PowerPoint online. So I think this is, oh, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> um, something from one of my schools. So yeah, you guys can see like, it's very, pretty similar to Google Slides and PowerPoint itself. And it's, again, can only be accessed through this account. Great. Well, I think in looking at the uh, chat box, I don't see any other questions in there. We we are we have about five minutes left if needed. And if not, that's just fine too. But if anyone has final questions, just dump them in the chat box or refresh it or show us what you might have shared earlier that we missed. Copy and paste. 
Love the suggestion for box.com. Other sources other than Dropbox. That's a good one too. And and I think uh, for for those with thousands and thousands of emails to sort through, um, I think we had in, in preparation for this, we we talked about this somewhat in that um, I have a Yahoo account that I get a lot of marketing emails for. Um, and I'd like to, you know, I stay subscribed to some, but at one point it got way out of hand and I had tens of thousands of emails. So I took a good, you know, I set aside a month every morning with my coffee, just open it up um, and just go through like, type in whatever, you know, type in, I don't know, Groupon, and then just start deleting and going through it and just bit by bit over time, um, just got through it and um, just got to kind of, just kind of be diligent and um, just know that the end is in sight. And then at the end, you feel really good. And now it's completely under control. I can keep that inbox clean and it's, it's so good and it helps. So yeah, that's right. That's wonderful. Julia shares 6,521 messages from four different email accounts. I can relate. See, and that's when you put on your favorite podcast, your favorite song, your favorite TV show, and just, you know, go a little chunks at a time. Don't try and do 6,000 at once because. <laughs> yeah. And that, I think in that case, Julia, the search is going to be your best friend. I know when I first started putting things in folders, you know, it's like if I could identify that I got a lot of emails from one person that all would go in the same folder, I'd search for all emails from that person and just file them all in one go. Mm -hmm. Or if I knew I wanted to delete all emails from one person, I would search for that person and delete them all in one go. And that will, it'll be like a snowball effect, right? You can do a whole bunch in once and then you'll feel like you've accomplished something really big. So then the more tedious little one by one won't feel so overwhelming. Those are all great tips. The, the three of you, thank you so much. If, if you have any final parting words of advice that, that uh, you want to share, please do so at this, uh, at this point. I think Bethany, you had some good ones right there. Um, Valerie or Caitlin, any final thoughts for folks as they leave and embark on this journey? <laughs> Yeah, well, good you have fun, fun with the color coding. I feel like the color coding just makes it a little bit cheerier. Um, so I highly suggest. That's right. good, and it's it's not always perfect. Like there's days and weeks that just kind of get get um get away from me. So you know it's okay uh to do that. But yeah, um, just still a, a little by little. And um, uh, thank you for joining. Thank you so much, uh, the facilitators that have done such a great job on sharing tips and techniques to get control of our inboxes today. I'm definitely going, Valerie, and creating my smile folder right now. I think uh, that's, that's a great tip, and I learned so many other wonderful ones, too. So thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in, in future webinars and podcasts. Have a great day. Uh, Jody. I think we had a question from Naomi. Oh, we did? Where sure. were to access these um, webinar recordings? Um, yes, you can access those online um, under uh, NPCA's Global Reentry. I'll go ahead and, and put that in just one moment here. You can stick on after we uh, end the uh, recording and I'll get that for you, okay? Thanks everyone and make it a great day. Have a wonderful long weekend.